Oh boy, it's mind pump time. Today's episode, a bit controversial. That's why you're here, right? You want to hear some controversy? Well, you got it. In today's episode, we cover probably the most controversial topic that you can find today, and we have a fun time talking about it. By the way, here's today's giveaway. Free access to the Mind Pump Forum. In fact, if this is a subject or any other subject is a subject that you'd like to debate and discuss with other smart, fitness-minded people, our Mind Pump Private Forum is the perfect place to do it. So here's how you can win access to the Mind Pump Private Forum. Leave a comment below. Give us your opinion on this episode. Let us know what you feel. If we pick your comment as the best comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the Mind Pump Private Forum. But you also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. One more thing, two workout programs are on sale right now, 50% off. MAPS Performance and MAPS Suspension, both half off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50, that's SEPTEMBER50 with no space, for that discount. All right, enjoy the controversy. All right, gentlemen, you guys ready to have a controversial conversation? Ooh, we haven't done one in a while. I know. You know, um, I, we, I know we keep getting messages on this particular topic we're going to cover today, and... Often the messages I get are, why, you know, why are people in the fitness and health industry this way? Why are they pushing back on this particular topic? And what I want to do is talk about not our own personal opinions. I think that's irrelevant uh, to this yeah. conversation, but rather why the fitness and health industry responds the way that it does for, in, in, for now. What's happening right now is this whole debate and conversation around uh, vaccines and COVID and vaccine mandates and all employers with 100 or more workers must require vaccination or weekly testing of their employees. The new rule impacting some 80 million Americans. The bottom line, we're going to protect vaccinated workers from unvaccinated co-workers. You know, who should and shouldn't get them. In the past, uh, the fitness industry and health industry has been skeptical of any other health, um, you know, recommendation. And I, I do want to be very clear when we get into this that if you are objective and you look back, you'll notice that the health and fitness industry is always skeptical. So it's not this particular subject. Mm -hmm. uh, the government could come out and recommend that we all avoid one particular food or we all stop eating meat or we all have to eat this particular way. And they will get, typically will get pushback from the health and fitness industry. And right now the the big, again, the big argument is around vaccines. And so, I want to talk about why, why that is, and and why the in, why our industry in particular seems to be the ones that that push back the most. Do you think that twenty to twenty five years ago, uh, had this all happened, that it wouldn't be this polarizing? Do you That's think a that, great question. Do you think that the the just because of how fast media travels today, how mm -hmm. we all it, it, like read and get media mm -hmm. today is so different than just a decade or two ago? Do you think that's part of it? Like, I feel like something that uh, we're the we're waiting for these these studies to come out yeah. and for you know a certain amount of population to get vaccinated and then to tease out what are we seeing. I mean, that's that takes some time, and we're barely starting to see some of the research on some of these countries that were ahead of us. And and but because you get like the real time update on Twitter yeah. and Instagram, mm -hmm. and as soon as something moves in one percent this way or one percent that way, you get all the alarmists that are posting yeah, right no, away. No, that's a that's a really good question. I think no, and here's why. I think you're right. I think that because of media and how easily accessible it is, how it's in your face constantly, um, it's easier to politicize uh, topics and subjects. Now that being said. The health and fitness industry has always been skeptical of rec health recommendations that came out of either government or the pharmaceutical industry or the food industry. We've always kind of been that way. You know, you even go back to the days of Vince Caranda and bodybuilders, and they were doing things that people were like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? That's totally unhealthy. I mean, if you were lifting weights in the 70s and 80s to improve your health and fitness, you were told by medical professionals, you're going to hurt your joints. You're going to destroy your knees. You're going to destroy your back. Don't do that. It's bad for you. Oh, women definitely shouldn't lift weights. It's just going to make you a man. It's not good for you. So we've always kind of been at odds uh, for certain things. And then, of course, science catches up. People change their minds. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the fitness industry changes its mind. Usually it's the medical industry that changes its mind. And we can go down that path if, if we want to 
find reasons. Um, but I think before we do, you know, here's something that I think is real important. And, and off air, we all always we have often often have conversations whenever there's things that get really heated. We don't do this on air because we have to hash things out. And one thing that we all have in common, because we all train people for a long time, I mean, over two decades, you, you, you start to become better at your craft after a certain while. And whenever topics, especially around, around health, are politicized, it's almost impossible to not uh, have feelings around it. Yeah. It's almost impossible to not have your own opinions or fears or anxieties or have your, you know, your position be skewed. It's almost impossible. And so what you have to do, and I remember, you know, I'll, I'll use a personal example. You know, years ago, a long time ago, somebody very close to me was diagnosed with uh, stage four stomach cancer. It was actually called lenitis plastica. This is a, a cancer where the, the survival rate after five years, I think is like 5%. or Something like that's basically that's your, your terminal. Okay. And when I was in that position with this person who I cared very much about, I'm a health person. And so I'm like, okay. Our medical system really has no answer for this. Man, that was literally the words from the doctors. We'll try this, but the data shows it's not going to help. And so what I did was is I went and I researched animal studies and studies in you know, petri dishes. Like, What could I find? Anything that could possibly help. And at, at one point, what I had to do is remove my feeling. And my feelings were, I'm going to save this person no matter what. And I had to – and what happens when you're in that state of mind, if you've ever been – in a position like that is it's really easy for me to pull up an article, you know, miracle cancer cure that the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want you to know about, you know, and it's this thing, this mm -hmm. herb or something It's really easy for me to, to, to latch onto that. So what I did is I said, okay, this is crazy because I'm on the internet till three o'clock in the morning, every night trying to figure this out. And what I did was, and this is what we, what we've done all together is you take your feelings aside and you say, okay, the best metric we have is data from multiple sources, independent data, uh, data either from, you know, different agencies, data from different, you know, uh, science organizations, although it's not perfect, I can't think of a more objective thing to look at in order to base a decision. Because everything else, especially when it's so politicized like this is right now, mm -hmm. everything else is Well, I don't, think it's, just, I don't think it's just that either. I also think that... Um you know, there's a there's a lot of big influencers right now that are putting pressure on people that have platforms. Like if you have a large platform, that it's your responsibility right. to, to stand up and speak, you know, whatever you believe or whatever you think. And I don't fully agree with that. And it's not that I don't think that you should take, uh, you know, stand in what you believe or stand up for your values. But I also think that it's irresponsible to communicate something that you don't have a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. around and just because you're emotional about something just to your point you know real easily i could be reading reading or watching one news channel and get emotionally charged in this direction switch to the opposite side listen to that and then get emotionally swung the other way and i just think that it's irresponsible because maybe you're the person who spends more time on one side or the other and because you have a large platform like we do to come out and take a stance on something that we're all learning about right now or this feel is, forced like yeah. you have to take a stance yeah it's unclear and and that's just uh you know that that's part of deciphering what is really happening like what's where the real information out there to grab onto, it takes a lot of time to dig through because there's two different agendas, it seems, um, you know, being promoted and polarized and everybody's taking lines in the sand. But what what's the objective truth? What's what's the data say? Like what where where has this played out in other countries? Like what what is the population kind of reporting back yep. in the medical community itself? What are they saying? What are they seeing? So to 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 really pull your emotions out takes a massive discipline these days, more so than ever, I think. And uh, it's really hard to do. So uh, and I find myself again, I, I I'll get caught into that emotional world wind of what's right, what's wrong, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, but for everybody to take a deep breath and, and try to, to really assess uh, based off of just the data, what's, what is that saying right now? Even that's freaking hard. Yeah. Because it's really easy to cherry pick data to support your argument. Totally. And we, we're seeing a ton of that on both sides. You're seeing a ton of pieces of data that goes, oh, this is C 
seems like this supports my argument. Right. And so they, they cherry pick it and then they use that. So it takes a lot to not only read the data, yeah. but to read the data on both sides and then also understand that there's a bias uh, that you're reading. Totally. Because of where it's coming from. Totally. And, and yeah. data is not perfect. It can get influenced. Yep. But I think the best the best way to approach it is to look at data from multiple sources, look at meta analysis, which takes multiple studies and analyzes, analyzes them. Look at data from agencies that aren't connected. Is it perfect? No, nothing's perfect. But I can't think of anything that's more objective uh, than that. So it's the best thing that we have. And again, and here's one another thing, a point that I want to make with politics. It is it is poisoning and influencing every single thing in our lives. And here's what politics does. Okay, this is what politics does very well. They don't handle multiple opinions on a spectrum at all. Politics doesn't do that. I mean, how many political parties do we have in this country? There's mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. There aren't 15 that are on a stage debating. The, the aim of politics is to create camps, and it's always two camps. There's not never yeah. more than two. There's no room for nuance. Nothing. So if you come out and you, let's say you're somebody that says, you know what? This, this COVID vaccine is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're in the all vaccines are a good idea camp. You're in the blindly follow whatever the government says camp, right? <laughs> and the person's like, whoa, 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 no, 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 I'm, that's not me. No, 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 that's what you are. And then if you say, hey, you know what? For me, uh, I think I'm going to wait on the vaccine or, you know, I think I want more data or, you know, I don't want it. Oh, you're the anti-vaxxer. Like, no, 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 hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> I have all these other vaccines. I'm not anti-vax. <laughs> I just and so the, this is the big thing that politics does very well as it creates two camps and you're either with us or against us. Don't fall for it. Most people are not clear in one camp. That's just a fact. 100%. Yeah. Talk to anybody who disagrees on the subject, right. and I guarantee if you talk to them, you'll find that it's it's way more nuanced. You're, e than there's you're a either a communist or you don't care about other people's lives. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like one or the other. It's, either you don't care about other people's lives uh, or you're a communist. Yes. So <laughs> so before we get into like the reasons why the fitness and health industry just generally is skeptical of uh, the, just health recommendations in general, but the vaccine more specifically for this episode, here is the current data as of the recording of this podcast. Okay. So these are numbers. So you, it's not our opinion. If you disagree with the numbers, then I don't know how to help you. <laughs> There's, I can't, you know, I can't uh, argue with you. This is not opinions again, but so far what we're finding in the data is you are far more likely to be hospitalized if you don't have any immunity, which includes vaccine immunity also includes natural immunity, but it also includes vaccine immunity. So that's number one. The studies on natural immunity, one of the large studies, there was one of the largest studies came out of Israel, showed this pretty clearly, but other studies have also supported this, that natural immunity is the best type of immunity. By the way, this supports how natural immunity tends to compare to vaccine immunity anyway. Generally speaking, natural immunity is, is stronger than vaccine immunity. It comes with its own uh, risks, of course, like uh, I'd rather get a polio vaccine than risk getting polio and developing natural immunity to it because we know what polio could cause, for example. Nonetheless, if you were infected with COVID and you survived and healed and it wasn't a big deal or whatever, your immunity, according to the current data, is better than the kind of immunity that you would get uh, from a vaccine. Uh, the data is very clear and it shows that, it, that vaccines reduce the risk of infection. And again, we're comparing this to people who have no immunity whatsoever, okay? Reduces your risk of infection, reduces your risk of severe symptoms and death. That's what the data currently shows. Data also shows that the vast majority of people who die from getting infected with COVID had comorbidities, which include things like diabetes, heart disease, um, inflammatory autoimmune disorders. The most common of these uh, comorbidities is obesity. So if you are obese and you get sick, all things being equal, okay? So don't do the whole comparison thing like, oh, I know somebody that's obese and they did well, I know somebody, okay? So all things being equal, if you had two identical twins and everything was the same and one was obese and one wasn't, the obese person would likely suffer from more se severe uh, symptoms. And that's just a fact, again. Here's another fact, okay? It's early in this stage of pandemic. <laughs> so a lot of these things can change. And it's early in this, uh, you know, this stage of these vaccines. It's impossible to know long-term effects of both COVID 
and the vaccine. That's just the bottom line. If anybody tells you otherwise, they can't. There's yeah, no nobody has speculating. A, nobody has a crystal ball. So, could there be long term, you know, effects from a vaccine? Unlikely, but yeah. Could there be also long term effects from COVID? Yeah, definitely. There's there's lots of viruses that people can get. For example, HPV is a is a is a common one. You could get HPV, get no symptoms and then increase your risk of cervical cancer later on, which we now know, right? So those things are impossible to know. So now what I want to talk about is why the fitness and health and wellness industry, specifically right now, seems to be the most skeptical of you know these vaccine recommendations. Because if you go on social media or if you read blogs or articles, whenever you read about people who are skeptical or who say I'm not getting vaccinated and or watch out for this or whatever. It almost always comes from the health, wellness or fitness industry. I feel like we're in kind of like a um the boy that cried wolf scenario. Hmm. Because the because the government has failed so many times with recommendations, you know, pregnant women should smoke cigarettes and <laughs> yeah. you know thing and the food pyramid yes. that's upside down, you know, like oh, yeah. saturated fats are gonna give you or a heart just, attack. Or just fat. Just fat, just in, general. fat in general. Right. Bad for you. So I, I think that's whether they're right or wrong in this situation, I think to your point of why the health space is just more skeptical because we live in that space when there's a lot of people that I know that are average people that didn't even know that the food pyramid was so off yeah. still to this day right, right? Or, i still have cousins or aunts that uh, eat margarine because they said right or, or recommendations around cholesterol right or you know a lot, i mean most people know about the pregnant women shouldn't be smoking by now i about think that's time. yeah about that's made its yeah. way around right. but there's still a lot of people that don't know uh, how how many bad uh, I, things that the government has advised with related to health and so because of that I think that you get a larger percentage of people in the health and fitness space that are more skeptical because they've seen yeah, they've this. seen those inconsistencies. Yeah. And I think uh, nutrition is a great example of that. Is you go back in in just growing up through school and what they're promoting to us, it just if you come back, it's almost exactly the opposite. Uh, like on almost like so. We talked about cholesterol. We talked about saturated fats. Talked about food pyramid. We just there's just so many different examples of like eggs are bad for you. Like they, like no wait they're good for you. Uh, yeah. You know it's just like it's this constant sort of of you know batting the ball back and forth where it just it gets frustrating because you're trying to to relay this information to your clients and have them successful and healthy, but in fact you feel. You, you feel somewhat like invalidated when the new research comes out and, and it totally undermines what you're just yeah. teaching them. Yeah. Or, or you're just always opposing. You're always yeah. Opposing. Or you're always trying to fight what they're coming in with. Yeah. So people need to understand this. The fitness, health and wellness industry is also the health industry, just like the medical industry is considered the health industry. Now, different approaches, typically different methods, right? If you're a fitness professional, your expertise is exercise, right? It's nutrition, it's uh, relationship with exercise and nutrition and that kind of stuff. If there's wellness involved, you're understanding the effects of how you are with relationships with other, that kind of stuff. If you're the medical health side, right? You understand medicine, you understand how to treat acute illness. Like if a client came to me and is like, oh my God, Sal, my left arm is under so much pain. I have so much pressure in my chest. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Call the doctor. We got to go to the doctor, right? But if they go to the doctor and they say, Hey doctor, um, you know, I, I just I don't feel very strong when I lift up boxes. I think I have a little bit of back pain and I'm only eating 1500 calories and I'm still fat. What's going on? Doctor should say, go talk to Sal. He can help you because this isn't what I know. So, what we need to understand is that the fitness, health and wellness industry is still the health industry. So, here we are. And by the way, all, not all the recommendations that came from government were wrong. Some of them were wrong. But the ones that they were wrong on were, were so opposite of what the health and fitness industry had said. So if you went to a fitness professional 30 years ago and said, uh, should I eat eggs? Most of them would be like, absolutely, man. When my clients eat eggs, they're stronger, they feel good, they have more energy. Now, the, the, the medical side would have been like, hell no. In fact, they used to say, I think it was like one egg a week or something like that because it's so high in cholesterol. Now we know that's totally wrong, right? And we could point all the reasons, all the stuff that they've said that's been wrong in the past. And I'll tell you what, as a, as a trainer, I've had many clients come to me 
with diet advice from doctors that just made my skin crawl. Like I had clients come to me and say, um, yeah, doctor put me on a 500 calorie a day diet and it's a liquid diet mm -hmm. to help me lose weight. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? That's absolutely terrible. And so it's no wonder, and this is, I think the most important part, by the way, doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter what health recommendations they put out. The people that will always be skeptical is the fitness and health and wellness industry. So right now it's vaccines. It could be anything. If right now the government came out and said, like I said, uh, everybody needs to just eat vegetables, which kind of they're, they're actually point, moving in that direction. The people you'll see that'll push back the most is going to be the health industry. So it really doesn't matter. So we automatically, the people in our space put up their walls and say, hold on a second. I'm skeptical. So they don't accept what is being said right away as the right thing. And so that I think is a big part of it. Yeah. I think it's also because most of those people feel confident that they can handle this themselves, right? That they could take care of their own health. Oh, like that's I, a big one. I think if you're in this space, especially if you've been in this space for years or decades, like in our case, where uh, you've done a lot of reading and nutrition and exercise and you know, you hear a study like the one that you've talked about where, you know, a, ma a majority of the people that are dying have these, you know, uh, obese or heart conditions and health related stuff that are underlining that makes them th such high risk. So there's a lot of people in that space that feel, hey, I, I've been fighting my whole life to stay away from those things already. I feel confident that I have control of this. Bro, I, I, you couldn't have said it any better. Like if I went to to let's say I got, um, in fact, recently we just got our uh, a huge physical and blood panel test because we are all doing this business thing with each other that involves life insurance. We got to test all your stuff, right? If my numbers came back, and I looked and the and they said, "Oh, Sal, your your blood lipids are way off, or your blood pressure is high." Now I'm not going to the doctor and getting medication. Not not right away, at least. No, no. Let me, go, let me adjust my diet and exercise totally. first. Yeah. Now, I may go to the doctor if I do all those things and I'm like, okay, um, high blood pressure is damaging by itself. I'm doing all the stuff. I lost weight. I reduced this. I reduced that. I increased this. All the things I know how to do, it's not working. Yeah. Now I'm going to go take a medication. By the way, look at the numbers, okay? People who exercise regularly and who prioritize their health take significantly less medications than people who don't do those things. And it's because you're more fit and healthy, but it's also because we're more confident in our health because we we're take inside it. our body. Yes. We're working on our body uh, constantly. And so, yeah, the health and fitness issue, I think you nailed it. I think it's, it, it really is. It's a constant work on our body that, um, you know, we, we can assess the interventions necessary. Like, so uh, if I get, really sick if i if i have uh, symptoms um and and you're able to kind of you know decipher you know the severity of them like that's going to take me to the hospital versus if i've never experienced any kind of symptoms you know i might just go to the hospital right away uh but i as i'm working on my body i can understand these signals and what my body's going through uh you know and, and that's just something that uh, health and fitness people i think that you know they kind of hold on to that well I'm a perfect example of this in the last three years and a perfect example of someone who eventually went to Western medicine to help me out. I mean, I, I tried for almost two years to increase my testosterone levels naturally yep, good through example. all those things. And I, and I made a little bit of progress, but not enough to feel good and not enough to feel confident that I've got this without the assistance of that. But you bet your ass that I'm going to try it first and do all the things I, I can to can control that before I go, hey, okay, I'm going to commit now to taking a shot for every week now for potentially the rest of my life. Dude, okay, let me ask you guys. I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you guys a question. How Have you guys ever had a client that came to you that said, yeah, I'm going to get shoulder surgery or oh, yeah, I need knee surgery. And then after you train them for six months, they go, oh my God, I don't need surgery anymore. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you before? Yeah. Okay. It happened to me all the time. Now, why is that? Because the average person is not confident in their ability to remedy certain things. Whereas if you're, if, if health is a priority to you, you study it and it's something that's important and you take actions to, again, to prioritize your health. Continually practicing it. Yeah. You're going to, you, you, you sometimes, oftentimes, and it depends on the situation. Adam used a great example, right? You got to go the, the medicine route. However, 
you know that there's things you could do naturally. You're like, let me try these things. Yeah. I know my body, or at least I know what can help my body. Let, let me give this a shot. So that's a, that's a perfect example. Here's kind of an extension of that. People in fitness and health, especially professionals, take full responsibility for our health. Most people mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. take any responsibility in their health. I mean, yeah. the average yeah, person- suing McDonald's. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's so true. Yeah. You know, or, you know, blaming the food industry, blaming, I, like I have, uh, you know, I have examples of people where they, something will happen to them, something will happen to their health. And it's like, how, how did this happen? What's going on? And now, now I'm not trying to poke fun at them. I'm not trying to say that they're idiots or, or, or that they're not responsible. They're just unaware. Yeah. They're just told, wait a minute, why is my, why do I have di like high blood sugar? And I have family members like this. Well, they, they're, they'll come to me every once in a while with something and they'll say something like, why is my blood sugar high? This doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> here's why, here's why, here's why maybe, may if we do those things, let's see what happens. Do they? Usually they don't. In fact, if you, if you talk to doctors, there's a, you know, there's such a high percentage of people that don't even take medications when they're told by their doctor, you have to take these medications because if you don't, you'll be at a higher risk for, you know, all these things, ah, you know, they'll forget or whatever, or a doctor will say to them, I mean, I know people in really, I've known people in really bad situations where doctors like I had an aunt, her blood sugar would get so high. I mean, they're like, you're going to go blind or you're going to lose limbs. And she would still, you know, she would still eat candy and desserts and stuff like that. And, and I get it. It's, it's not easy. And sometimes you just want to feel good in the moment, but people in the, in the health and fitness, when you take full responsibility of your health, when somebody tells you to do something for your health, you're automatically going to say, well, hold on, give me a second. Let me think about this. Or let me, let me, let me see what I can do through my lifestyle because that's a big one, right? What affects your health more than anything is your lifestyle, yeah. not just a single action, well, but rather how you live. In the pursuit of being empathetic, you know, in, in in cultural pursuits of this, you know, we've lost sight of of objective uh, of you know type of advice that will actually help people, and and you know, it, it seems like it's being mean or uh, you know you're shaming or. Like, no, like if you really care for somebody, you want to provide them with good information that's going to help them thrive and be healthy. And so there's it, what we've seen with this virus, too, is it, it exposed a lot of like previous types of problematic uh, lifestyle driven uh, ways that people are living their lives. So if, you know, obesity is a real uh, susceptibility to having bad symptoms uh, from this virus. And that has to be something yep. that gets talked about. And I do, I, you know, I want to say this too. I want to be clear that um, this is for better or worse. Like all these reasons that we're giving as to why the fitness and health industry is skeptical. We're not saying they necessarily should be. We're not saying that they shouldn't be. But I will say this. I will make this statement. More often than not, the skepticism benefits them, <laughs> just historically speaking, okay? In this case, it might not. In this case, you might be the health and fitness professional who waited, 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 uh, you get sick, and then for some reason, your immunity just didn't hack it, and then something bad happened to you. Um, but we're just explaining why. Why you're hearing it from that space more than anyone. I, I also think that you can be skeptical for yourself, but yet still pro. In this. For example, like uh, I mean, I, I called my my mom and dad both up and I told them, you go get that vaccine. Go get that as soon as you can. Because both of them are overweight, drink, smoked on and off their life. I know have low vitamin D levels. They're unhealthy. They have poor diets. They're probably both- Super high risk. They're very high risk. And I don't care what the other side says about, oh, the potential long-term effects. They may not live that long at all. Right. The route they're going with, forget the virus out there, just the route they're going already, they may not live that long. Right. So I absolutely want them to do that. So you can, But yet then for myself, I feel, okay, I'm a little bit more in control and have been in control of of my diet, my nutrition, my exercise, my health. So you have the luxury of pausing there. Yeah. Yep. And, and that, I think that's just, yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the pushback comes from, from the health fitness community is that there is a difference there. You know, if 
all things considered, like if, if there's been a lot of effort and practice around like healthy contributing habits, like, you, you know, that's, that's going to play a factor. It gives you, okay. So, and again, the data still shows, so again, I want to be clear. The data still shows you're probably, uh, you're, well, the data shows you're better off getting vaccinated than having no immunity, regardless of how healthy you are. However, when you're very healthy, when you feel strong, when you're, you take care of your diet, your sleep and all that stuff, you're just less fearful and you ha you're just more confident in your own abilities. And I, this doesn't matter what the case is. If you take anybody and you make them feel strong in their bodies, confident, have good energy, they are generally less fearful of anything. And when you're less fearful, you are going to pause more often and consider other things. So I said, you know, when, when you were talking about recommending your parents, Adam, I said, well, they don't have the luxury necessarily of pausing, whereas you have more of a luxury of that. Yeah. You're, you know, because you're saying, well, I'm, I'm more, I'm pretty healthy. I'm very fit. I take care of these things. So I have more odds of, uh, you know, doing okay. So let me pause for a second. Whereas if, let's say you're, you just suffer, you just survive cancer. You know, you might think to yourself, I don't got the luxury of pausing. Like I, this is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. By the way, studies show quite clearly that when you improve the physical strength of somebody, they're less fearful generally. And I, the, the, one of the number one comments I used to get from women in particular when we would lift weights after months of training, they would always come to me and say, I feel less afraid and I feel more confident in life because you're just stronger. So generally speaking, feeling fit, strong, and healthy, you are less fearful and therefore you are less likely to, be, to, to make decisions based off of fear. Now, I'm not saying everybody makes decisions off fear. I'm just saying when you feel strong, when you feel good, you're, you're more likely, you're probably more likely to say, hold on a second, let me wait and see what's going on here. Now, what, what, what is the, um, the risk factor of spreading if you are unvaccinated? Because that's normally the pushback that I give, get when I, when I talk about my personal, right? Oh, when right. I say, this is how I feel about my parents. This is where I'm at personally. And you get the, uh, the extreme other side that will go like, that's so unselfish for you to do that because you're putting me at risk. Sure. And uh, if I'm correct, that uh, it's you're just as likely to spread the virus being vaccinated or unvaccinated. It's really more about the severity of the symptoms. No, that the, I, no. That, okay, so data is it's a bit murky on that. So far, it looks like because you're less likely to be infected, you are less likely to spread it if you're vaccinated. That's what they're saying. Could by the way, could any of this data change in a week or two? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot has changed over the last year, our, the vaccines at one point were 97 percent effective, and then this variant came out, and now, the, you know, at, at preventing infection, they were 97 percent, like, you just aren't going to get it, and now people are getting it, but now we're seeing reduced symptoms, so right. the current data says, yeah, you're less likely uh, to spread it as a result, and I mean, we can but get- it's not foolproof is, is the other side to that. No, and, and, and the, the current data also points to the fact that and again, I'm going straight based off of current data. Okay, this isn't my opinion, but the the experts in this field who are writing about this are saying it's not going away. It's never going to go away. It's going to go into endemic stage, meaning that it's going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. uh, it crosses over into animals too, so it's like which is a, a real problem. Yeah, so it's like we'd have to vaccinate every human vaccinate plus every every animal. Yeah, and it would have to be like a ninety percent effective. Whatever, so it's probably going to be around uh, forever. So, and that you know, and I want to say that because, uh, again, what politicians will do is they'll make you, they'll make you feel like if you just do what they say, that will fix everything. Yeah, which is not the case. I mean, some of the stuff they say it's is not preparing valid. us for the real future. Yes, so absolutely. they're saying they're saying that it mimics most like a cold the way it changes but it has the the severity of like the flu right isn't that kind of how they're explaining it it's like it changes just like colds are constantly mutating all the time but then it, it's got the the deadly side of it and serious and severity of like flu so i read an article out of science i think it was scientific american it was really really well written and what the guy or girl i don't remember who wrote it said was that the severity of this is so severe right now because it entered uh, into society and we had like no immune, no immunity to it. Right. So it was brand new. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, this is a, this is a, a terrible example, but it's, it's a good example. It's like when Europeans came to the Americas 
and all the Native Americans died, or a lot of them died from diseases that the Europeans had already built immunity over. It didn't affect them, but it wiped out people who had no immunity. So what they said was, here's what's going to happen. As more and more people get infected, as more and more people get vaccinated, we'll start to get to the point where we'll have more immunity, and so it will become less and less severe. Now, now what he, they also said in the article was, it's not the kind of immunity where it, it goes away. It's the kind of immunity where you get infected, but it's not nearly as severe, just like a cold. Right. You know that one of the cold viruses, which was which is also a coronavirus. Rhinovirus. Well, well one of them was, a, there's, there's three corona or two All or right. three corona other related. coronaviruses that cause uh, also the common cold. One of them they think was responsible for a pandemic uh, in the past. I believe it was like a Russian pandemic. And then of course people, there's immunity. And then, you know, like I said, we can throw vaccines on that. And then what it'll, and this was according to the article I read, they said that, uh, in the future, what it will be is a childhood illness. So kids will get it because they have no immunity and then kids get it pretty mildly anyway. And then they grow up and then that's similar it. to chicken pox. Yeah. It, or no different because it's a respiratory illness, but it'll be like a common cold that go, or, at, or like the flu where, you know, we deal with, 12 to 60,000 deaths a year from the flu. It'll be something, you know, something like that. So, you know, uh, people in the health space have not just seen, or the health and fitness space have not just seen bad information come out of, uh, of government recommendations, but we've also seen complete reversals, which is the, is different than, Oh, this information is wrong. Yeah. You know, there's, 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 and, and these aren't lies, but there's lies and then there's anti truths, right? So a lie is, you know, we uh, knew better and we told the, yeah, yeah, a lie is, a lie would be like, oh, that was wrong. Anti truth is the opposite of what you're saying. So, like, if Adam says, you know, I, I could say, uh, fire is green, right? That's just a lie, right? Or I could say, fire won't burn your hand. That's anti truth. Like, that's the opposite. We, us in the health and fitness space, uh, and I say us as in generally, we have not just seen wrong information. It's been the opposite. I mean, now the recommendation, okay, I'll use one stupid example. When we were growing up, I swear to God, this is true for people watching who are, who are younger than the age of probably 30. We were, we were hammered to avoid butter. Hammered. Like, do not eat butter. It'll kill you. It'll clog your arteries. Eat margarine. It's way healthier for you. It's, you know, made from vegetable oil. And I remember as a kid, my mom would buy, when I opened the fridge, we didn't have butter. We'd have a big tub of country crock, you know, which was basically vegetable margarine spread, right? And this is what we were told forever. Today, they don't just say, uh, oh, you know, um, we were kind of wrong on butter. They say, don't eat margarine. <laughs> it's terrible for you. I'll kill you. Yeah. Eat butter, right? Yeah. We were told in the 80s, that coffee gave you cancer. Mm -hmm. This is what we were told. Yep. Oh, studies show that coffee gives people cancer. Coffee's bad for... If you talk to any doctor in the 80s about drinking coffee, they would all say, bad for you, stop doing it. You need to stop drinking coffee. It's totally bad for you. Now they say, coffee's good for you. Yep. It's very good for you. And, and not only does it not cause cancer, it's anti-cancer. Studies actually show that it reduces your risk of certain types of cancer. Now, that, that being said... I I think less of that, and even what we're dealing with right now, is big government lying to us and more about that the, the science is still so new. Totally. For your example with coffee, uh, you know, when they were showing research to support that, but they forgot to t test for and see that if someone also drinks coffee, they're more likely to smoke cigarettes. Totally. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the, the missing piece, which we may have this in 20 years from now, that hey, they're, they're trying to guide us in the best direction they can or what they feel is the best direction until we find out 20 years from now that there was something else that we didn't tease out from the study. Yeah, it's 100%. like a, a big false confidence yeah. uh, in, you know, I I get the fact to, to try and make sure that we don't have hysteria everywhere, but it just, uh, as, as a viewer or as somebody just been watching, um, there's just been a lot of inconsistencies with policies and um, re full full reversals of policies. Yes. Well, I think part of that is why um, politicians are going so hard in this direction is because it's the money. 
I mean, to me, that's... It's always... Isn't I mean, it always that? I think yeah, that, yeah. It, it, you know, if I can save the world and line my pockets with billions of dollars at the same or, time... Or say I could save the world. Right. Because they never do. Right. right. I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to double down and triple down on that because I can... Even if I'm wrong later down the road, I can... Well, I was trying to yep. help you and save you. Yeah, so and, I, and, I do think that's part of it. And this is also... Um, People in the health space were very aware of this years ago, but now I think the general public is starting to become aware of this, is that public policy sometimes is heavily influenced by lobbies and special interests, okay? And all it takes is one or two of those to become evident for people to start losing trust, right? So to give an example, uh, this is a silly one, but there were these mandates that went out, uh, I think it was like 15 years ago where they said, okay, we're going to improve school lunches because school lunches are just unhealthy. I mean, shit, when I was a kid, <laughs> if you got the school lunch, it was pizza or chicken nuggets uh, or a burger. And I think chocolate it, milk. Yeah, and yeah. chocolate milk, yeah. right? Yeah. And that was that was your food, right? Well, isn't isn't that how pizza got on the the plan in That's the first place? That's how it place? stayed on there. Oh, okay, because of tomatoes or whatever, the yes. vegetables? Yes, then they came out and they said, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, no, no. School lunches must include one serving of vegetables. So then the lobby comes out and, and lobbies government, and then they can, they said, okay, pizza's fine because tomato sauce is considered a vegetable technically, right? Which, I mean, if you're in the health space, you're just like, you roll your eyes like, okay, like – is is cake eggs then because eggs is in cake so I can eat and the eggs, truth that goes for breakfast. truth that goes back yes. to the money thing again too yes. what is a very cheap food that you can make in in bulk and then you could still fall in the guidelines I mean totally totally so and we've seen this uh, you know time and time again right we've seen this with the food pyramid which is obviously heavily influenced by 60% grains yeah it's obviously heavily influenced by um, these these lobbies here's a current example. Here's a current example. I don't care where you stand on vaccine mandates. I'm not talking about my opinion on whether or not we should have mandates or not. I think if you listen to the podcast, you kind of know, you know where I feel. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the clear inconsistency that, in my opinion, seems to be, especially to, to, to people who look, who've seen this before, to be influenced by lobbies. In, in many countries, in Europe and Israel, a vaccine man, a mandate, excuse me, includes natural immunity. So if you get a, va a card that says you're immune, it means I got vaccine, I got vaccinated, or I also, or I had COVID and now have natural immunity. The vaccine mandates that we're seeing here do not include any natural immunity. And then we see silliness like this, like kids getting, uh, like universities kicking students out who are virtual. <laughs> who don't have, you know, vaccines. Try stuff. and make sense of that. Yeah, so so you see stuff like that. Come on, I don't care where you stand. When you look at that, you got to shake your head and go, well, that doesn't make any sense. If you're going to mandate yeah. people, you should They're count. at their own house. Yeah, so does it look like influence from Big Pharma saying, no, 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 just count vaccines so we can sell more? I don't know if that's happening, but uh, it's. I could see why people would make that connection. And people in the health space have seen that so often with other stuff that it's no wonder... Uh, that they're going to feel, you know, skeptical with that. that. The food labels is my favorite. To this day, I look at food labels and I just go, or, or you know, the recommendations, and I just shake my head. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be very honest. If most people followed government food recommendations, uh, they'd be sick and unhealthy if, if they really did follow, yeah. or, or exercise recommendations for that matter. They still, to this day, I think now they're starting to recommend. Yeah. What's the allowed margin training? for for error, I remember you bringing this up yeah, all the time, Yeah, it's like Adam. twenty. It's like twenty or twenty five percent, which is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah do the math. A, yeah, if if you think you're eating two thousand calories, hmm. and you're off by twenty percent, yeah, four hundred calories, which could make the difference between gaining yeah. or losing weight. One hundred percent. We're not talking about fifty calories. We're talking about, and I get why they do that, but um, but if for all these reasons, for better or for worse, because I think this can also backfire sometimes. I think sometimes. People uh, in this space don't make the right decision because they're always skeptical mm -hmm. about everything. Um, and again, we're not even agreeing with their skepticism or not. Just explaining. This is why, no matter what comes out uh, from politicians or recommendations when it comes to health, from the medical industry or from the government, the industry that's probably going to push back, no matter what, is going to be uh, the health and fitness industry. So I think this will help people understand and also, 
most people are not on one side or the other. Most people are not anti all vaccines and most people are not pro give me whatever the hell you want and I'll take it and I don't care. So consider that also. Most people are somewhere in the middle. Don't let them divide us. And uh, I don't know if you guys have anything else to say. I no, think that's I agree. I, I think that you can be pro vaccine and not pro mandates. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we we're all smart enough people that we can do our own homework. We can do our own research and we can make that decision for ourselves, whether we feel that we are at risk or not. I yep. mean, I mean, uh, my opinion, even on myself would change if the studies and the research came out, if it was a 50, 50 shot that I live based off of being young, healthy and fit, uh, I'd have a different point of view for myself even, but yeah. it's because it's a 0.001% chance of death for someone in my category is why I lean that way. But that could change, right? Yeah. That could change in the in the next six months or a year or two years and who knows. Yeah. But I don't I definitely don't agree with being and even if it was that high, I still wouldn't agree yeah. with it being forced. You know what though is funny, you know, I want, I want to bring one more thing up is that although um people in our space are like pro eating healthy, pro exercising regularly, I think you'll you'll find that a, a very small percentage, if any at all, would ever support forcing people to eat unhealthy and forcing people to exercise. I don't know a single trainer mm -hmm. that if I came to them and said, look, you no. know the benefits of exercise and, and nutrition. Do you think we should make it a law? And they'd be like, no, no, I don't think so. Why? Here's why. Not because we don't think it might be beneficial. I think if we forced everybody to eat right, we'd probably save a lot of lives for sure. I think it's because we take our own health as our responsibility, which means we automatically respect that it's other people's responsibility for their own health as well. So I respect that uh, in people. Love your neighbor. Absolutely. That's all I got. <laughs> Look, if you love our information, please go to mindpumpfree.com and download some of our guides. We have guides for building muscle, burning body fat, improving your health, becoming a better personal trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsal, and Adam at mindpumpadam.